Wong's father and brothers were sent to a cooperative farm, where they were forced to work 12 hours every day. And later, her older brothers and sisters were sent respectively to separate labor camps. Pol Pot's dark age continued for about four years. During this period, over two million Cambodians died, victims of forced labor, starvation, disease, and massacres. Luong, a five-year-old girl and her family, were engulfed by this devastation. It was a year and a half after the evacuation from Phnom Penh when the Khmer Rouge soldiers identified Luang's father. In chapter 13, titled Pa, Luang describes what happened on the day that her beloved father was taken away. Pa, December 1976. Time passes slowly. We're in the middle of our summer because the air is hot and dry now. The next evening, while sitting with Kim outside the step of our hut, I think how the world is still somehow beautiful even when I feel no joy at being alive within it. It is still dark and the shimmery sunset of red, gold, and purple over horizon makes the sky look magic magical. Maybe there are gods living up there after all. When are they going to come down and bring peace to our land? When I focus my eyes back on Earth, I see two men in black walking toward us with their rifles, casually hanging on their backs. Is your father here? One of them asks. Yes, Kim answers. Pa hears them and comes out of the hut. It's party rigid. I can't do this anymore. I'm sorry, I can't do this part. Oh, you know, I've never read it out loud. And boy, I sound squeaky. <laughs> I remember that day two soldiers came asking for Pa, and as they took him away, I remember this glorious sunset. It was so beautiful, and I watched him walk away with them, and they said that he would come back tomorrow, and he never came back. We found out three days later that he was executed, but from that day on, sunsets always sort of made me feel bittersweet. I've never been able to fully enjoy a sunset after that. Luang's family after losing their father. After losing her husband, Luang's mother, Ai Chung, made a big decision. If we stay together, we will die together. With that, she ordered Luang and her older brother and sister to leave and to go far away to live separately and alone as orphans. She forcibly pushed her children away to each go in separate directions. Luang thought her mother an incredibly cold person to do such a thing and had resented her ever since. This is a picture of my mother when she was very young. It's a very bad photograph. It's old photograph, but you can see obviously she was very beautiful. It uh, took Luang a long time to come to terms smart. with her mother's decision, but she now knows that it was based on a very deep affection for her children and a need to see them survive. She now feels ashamed by her long-held hatred for her mother. After leaving her mother in 1977, Luang was sent to a camp for the training of children's soldiers. Child Soldiers, August 1977. The months passed and the government continues to increase our food ration, allowing me to grow a little stronger. My first night at the camp, the two groups gather around, roaring, around a roaring bonfire to listen to the latest propaganda. 
The two Maybong stand before us and take turns preaching their message. The Anka is our savior. The Anka is our liberator. We owe everything to the Anka. We are strong because of the Anka. Having heard it many times, I know when to break into the obligatory claps and scream. Anka, 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 we scream our replies. I never believe in their propaganda. I never believe them when they said that my parents were evil. All I did was I went through the motion. I did what was supposed to be done so I could eat. I never believed it. And I survived. Life back then revolved, evolved around feeling of rage and feeling of nothing. You're either so angry you want to kill someone, and when that becomes so overwhelming, you feel nothing, because you have also no power. In 1979, when Pol Pot's rule was finally over, the only survivors from Luang's family were three brothers, her big sister Zhu, and herself. Luang's mother and Geek, the youngest sister, were one day taken away by soldiers, and what happened to them has never been known. Meng, the oldest brother, lost all desire to live in his native land, Cambodia, and chose to live outside the country. In February 1980, Luang, along with Meng and his wife, arrived at a refugee camp in Thailand. They spent their days there just wishing that some other country would accept them. On the cover of the book is a picture of Luang herself, taken at the camp around that time. In June 1980, five months after their arrival at the camp, an American Christian organization agreed to sponsor the three, Luang, her brother, and his wife, and their wishes to immigrate to America finally came true. While many of the Cambodian refugees who were sent to America have located on the West Coast, Luang and her brother settled in Burlington, Vermont, in America's Northeast. Meng and his wife still live in this town. They both work at the factory of a local computer manufacturer. Their two daughters, who were born in America, now go to high school and college. For Luang, who now lives in Washington, D.C., this town is her home in America. Whenever she returns, Ang, Luang's sister-in-law, welcomes her by cooking her favorite Cambodian foods. Meng's wish to keep a happy family together brings Luang back to this home. And the girls and I stayed up talking all night. And Maria had to get up. What, what time are you up this morning, honey? Having now lived in America longer than she lived in Cambodia, Luang finds speaking in English easier than in her mother tongue, Khmer. She's accustomed to speaking English with her American-born nieces and in Khmer with her brother and sister-in-law. My family is very important to me. My family is here, a small family, and my two kids, my sister, and they are the most important to me. And since I came here, I work six, seven days a week, try to support them and save a little bit what I can and send it to send whatever I left over to my family back home in Cambodia. 
we were we were very poor when we first came and there were things that I wanted that I couldn't have and we didn't have money to buy. But I understood that we worked hard because we had to send money home. And in Cambodia back then it wasn't as if there was a choice. I mean the economy was so bad. What little we could send home to them kept them alive for a couple more days or a couple more months oh, and kept them fed. After coming to America, Meng and his wife learned English while working continuously. And in that first year, they had their first daughter, and two years later, they had their second. They devoted all their energy to supporting Luang's education, taking care of their little daughters, and rebuilding their happy family. Luang and her brother's family first lived on the second floor of this apartment building. Luang recalls that at the time, she very much missed her sister Zhu, who was left behind in Cambodia. I always thought about my family in Cambodia. 